about senolithics and trying to get rid of senescent cells, but we don't want to get rid of all of them, right? Because we still need some around. Do you have any idea what the optimal level of senescent cells would be? Would there be a target we would aim for? Oh yeah, no, that is totally unknown. And it probably will vary from tissue to tissue and individual to individual. You know, the mm. beauty of mice is they're inbred. They are all in the same environment. We have them in the same cave and people are terrible. We're not good inbreeders and we don't control our environment very well. So people are extremely varied. And mm. so we need to figure this out. That, that's really not known. Right. So reducing senescence. So we, we talked about senolytics. Um, what, what do you think is kind of the best? Or did you have a view on, on what, what is kind of like the best senolytic right now or that's currently in development? I don't. You know, there are in the San Francisco Bay Area where I live, there are probably 50, five, zero different companies developing different analytics. They don't all share their information. Um, so I, I don't. Of the ones that are commercially available, and there are several, um, they all have variable effects, meaning some of them work better on some diseases, others on other diseases. This is why I think it's great that there are so many different senolytics being developed. What we need is a way now to combine all of that information to know which ones are going to be best for which situations. We don't know that yet. Right. So, so one thing is, I, I saw one of your talks that we actually get, we, we can even get sen senescent cells in the central nervous system. Yes. Right. Yes. So do, do we think that we can, are they also bad? And can we, it, would it be safe to remove them? Yeah. So, so there are two parts to that question. So if you think about the nervous system, both the central nervous system, you know, especially the brain, um, you know, what makes your brain function are the neurons. Mm. But the neurons are not the major cell type in your brain. There are many other cell types in your brain that are not neurons, astrocytes, microglia, endothelial cells. They definitely become senescent. And we have shown that, for example, senescent astrocytes can affect the function and the viability of neurons. So we, we want to know which cells in the central nervous system are becoming senescent. Is it those non-neuronal cells or is it the neuron? Now, a neuron, if you think about it, neurons in an adult, they don't divide anywhere. So do they become senescent? The answer is they probably do become at least senescent light. They lose their function. They begin to secrete molecules that talk to their neighbors. And the big question is, is it better to have a malfunctioning neuron or a dead neuron? Mm. We do not have the answer to that. This is something that really needs to be worked out. Would it always be beneficial to kill senescent neurons or is it better to have a non-functional or semi-functional neuron as opposed to an absent neuron. We don't know the answer to that. Right, okay. So apart from senolytics, is there other, what other ways are there that we could make sure that we keep a low level of senescence as oh, we get older? Exactly what they are, right? So um, good diet. Um, Actually, visceral fat, so-called belly fat, is a very rich source of senescent cells. So avoiding obesity, um, you know, keeping a relatively lean mass. Exercise, we don't understand the mechanism, but we know that exercise you know, keeps the burden low. Um, and there are probably other lifestyle things that affect senescent cells, but again, it's kind of fuzzy right now. For example, sleep. You know, people who have good sleep hygiene, they call this sleep hygiene. You know, I, I'm terrible. You know, I'm one of these people after two hours, I'm, I'm wide awake again and I go to my computer, which is probably the worst thing to do. And 
But you know, all of those things we you know do have a burden. They they're stresses. And the I mean obesity is a stress, of course, and, and actually lack of exercise is a stress. So the idea is, is that if you avoid these stresses by good diet, by exercise, by good lifestyle, um, you can keep the level of senescent cells at a minimal rate. They'll probably still increase with age, but probably more to the level than if you were obese or you know totally sedentary um, or had very poor uh, sleep and other habits. Right, yes, no, I'm sure. And like eating antioxidants, I, I guess like vegetables with. Yes, yeah, so that's a classic Mediterranean diet. And as you know, some of the longest lived people are people who live in parts of the world where the Mediterranean diet is what they eat, you know, so everything is in moderation, lots of vegetables, not a lot of, of carbohydrates, not a lot of, 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 of meat, but not zero. I mean, I think, you know, some diets are maybe a bit too extreme. And I, I would question the utility of that. Uh, not enough has been done. Right. 